of the championship point leaderboards with over 1,000 straight away from Nick. And that's uh, that's going to mean that if there is a terrestrialization into the ground type, this uh, Calyrex may be able to start getting some big uh, trick rooms up and start dealing some damage, but Iron Hands is not going to be too mad about that. Honestly, no, it won't be. And I do think that there's a great opportunity here for Nick to just go for a double protect this first turn and see what Rajon switches into, because you know that Rajon must be thinking about the potential of a Terra Ground. And as a result, you don't want to keep that Maridon on the field. But interestingly enough, it's Talonflame that comes in as that Pokemon. Yeah, it's Talonflame coming in. So the Tailwind mode is now an option for Rajan. And interestingly enough, because the Calyrex is ground terra type, it is not fire, which has been the most common, means it is still vulnerable to a potential Will-O-Wisp coming out from that Talonflame. But of course, Amoongus is not going to be happy sitting in front of a big Brave Bird from a Life Orb Talonflame. No, it's most likely that would be a one-hit KO onto that Amoongus, depending how it's trained. But in the past, you know, Talonflame was the number one Pokemon that people would tech onto their team to try and get rid of the Amoongus in one hit. So certainly if Rajan wants to go for that, the opportunity is here. And there's really low risk for him, I think, to do so because the Talonflame probably was brought in recognition that Amoongus and Calyrex Ice Rider together are just so powerful on the field. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a, a, you know, seeing the Talonflame coming out is really interesting because we saw in the uh, Indianapolis and Los Angeles, the speed tiers that uh, the Pokemon on the Maridon team were hitting were very, important. So this Iron Hands may be able to function in Tailwind as well as Trick Room, but definitely can function heavy slamming the Amoongus, dropping it down just into that Citrus range. So we'll be able to heal right back up with another 25% of its health. While Talonflame protects itself from this Glacial Lance, preserving the Gale Wings ability and making sure that only the Iron Hands is taking damage. And again, that Iron Hands did move before the Calyrex here, so getting some important information about how these Pokemon are trained. I think that's definitely a sign that it's going to be more tempting for Nicholas to go for a Trick Room, just because we saw how much damage the Glacial Lance does, and we know that the Iron Hands is almost within that KO range. That being said, though, I don't think you necessarily try to rely on Trick Room at this point in time. We saw the back of his party. We know that there are Pokemon back there that probably would not benefit from the twisting of the dimensions. So I think Nicholas is playing a bit of a mind game here. He's trying to make it look like he wants that Trick Room. He wants his opponent to sort of prepare, send in their anti-Trick Room Pokemon. And while Rajan's doing that, he's just going to keep going for those Glacial Lances and just get those Pokemon closer and closer to those KOs. Well, here is what Amoongus does best it rage powders away the will o wisp oh. that is a huge rage powder for nick not protecting the calyrex from this burn and also keeping the amoongus up and on the field also tanking a drain punch not very effective damage bought a free turn for this calyrex this calyrex can go on the offensive or can set trick room ops for the offense big Glacial Lance into both Talonflame and Iron Hands. And that Talonflame, it did survive, but it only gets to fire off one attack thanks to the Life Orb and the recoil from Brave Bird. And the best thing that it can do at this point in time would be that Brave Bird into the Amoongus. Mm -hmm. Therefore, Iron Hands can target down the Calyrex with an attack of its own, but looking at the attacks it has, yes, it has Heavy Slam, yes, it has Drain Punch, Close combat. I'm not sure if those would do enough damage to pick up the KO onto this Calyrex Ice Rider at full health. No, definitely not at full health. So Nicholas now has the opportunity to either go for that speed control or go for a double knockout to get that plus two attack as Amoongus just keeps redirecting these attacks away. There is Talonflame making a valiant effort of it all. Brave Birding the Amoongus finally picks up the KO on that Pokemon, but will go down as well due to the recoil from Brave Bird. Doesn't even take the Life Orb recoil just yet. That means that Iron Hands gets to fire off a close combat. Rajan does not think that he would be able to uh, regain enough health from a Drain Punch to survive a Glacial Lance, but instead Calyrex just goes for the Trick Room. So Iron Hands remains on the field, has dropped defenses, and is definitely faster, AKA slower than the Calyrex in Trick Room. And Incineroar adding even more insult to injury intimidates the Iron Hands as Ursaluna is revealed to be the final Pokemon for Rajan. 
Blood Moon Ursaluna is a fantastic Pokemon to have as a Trick Room counter while you still have Terrastalization available, as otherwise you would most likely go down in a single hit to this Calyrex Ice Rider. Unfortunately for Rajan, though, he will have to buy a turn of time through this fake out from Nicholas. And while that happens, because the Iron Hands cannot protect, this Calyrex is guaranteed to get a plus one attack boost unless you make the switch, but this switch is so risky. Oh, the Maridon's gonna be taking super effective damage. There is no scenario where the Maridon does not take super effective damage, assuming that Nicholas went for, you know, did not try to high horsepower the Ursa Luna, which I could not imagine a situation where you ever do that. Here comes the fake out into the protect. It's just gonna be the Glacial Lance would pick up both KOs out on the field, instead just going to hit this Maridon Big damage coming out from that Pokemon. One hit KO on the switch in with the critical hit. And Roger will have to bring back in the Iron Hands. And I have to just shout out how incredibly patient Nick has been with the Trick Room. Being able to wait out even just a couple more turns means that this end game is going to be all in the Trick Room and all about this Calyrex. To Rajan's favor, he does have access to Fake Out once again, which is going to force the Kali Rex to protect. And the Incineroar will probably take a lot of damage from this Ursa Luna if it stays on the field. But that's one turn, and Trick Room will not expire at the end of that turn. So as long as Kali Rex can find a way to attack next turn, it should be pretty safe. Yeah, well, Rajan does have the out that this Ursa Luna is now carrying Vacuum Wave. It is no longer carrying uh, the Earth Power, so it does have access to some priority. However, on the switch in, this Urshifu is taking a Silk Scarf boosted Hyper Voice, will survive just barely after that, and importantly, the fake out is now gone. So the big question is, can Calyrex Ice Rider take a priority vacuum wave from the opposing Ursaluna and then return a double knockout with the Glacial Lance? Urshifu could try and find an opportunity here with an Aqua Jet as well, but that most likely would not do enough damage, and there still is the threat of terrestrialization from Rajan as well. I like the switch here as Incineroar is at full health, and if your opponent does go for a Protect on the Ursaluna again, you can retaliate and go for another Fake Out. Absolutely, here comes the terrestrialization, this time from the Ursa Luna. So, we'll be able to remove the weakness to Glacial Lance, instead going into a full normal typing. That may just be enough to survive a Glacial Lance, but it did get the boost from the Maridon KO earlier. And yeah, Ursa Luna is able to tank that like a champ. Iron Hands, however, will go down. No vacuum waves here, which means that this Ursa Luna is going for a Blood Moon or a Hyper Voice. It will be the Hyper Voice to go ahead and pick up the KO on the Calyrex. But as you, <laughs> the critical hit probably scaring Nick a little bit there, but as you called out, you now have the fake out pressure and you have Urshifu in the back, and that is a clean pin right there. You cannot protect against this. You cannot protect and you cannot attack. I think the best thing that Rajan could hope for would be vacuum wave into the Urshifu to pick up the KO, but fake out will stop mm -hmm. that quite nicely. Yeah, unfortunate for Rajan. That's just going to be the fake out and close combat into the Ursaluna and Nick Khan. The junior world champion from, I believe that was 2017, is back here in the Masters division and taking game one in our- Punish Calyrex Ice Rider trainers. And I think that's why if you were to look at the move usage on Ferrigraph this weekend, there'd be a ton of foul play going around. All right, well, here is the classic anti-Calyrex Amoongus lead coming out from Rajan. That is Maridon and the Ursa Luna, uh, the Blood Moon Ursa Luna on the field. Of course, Calyrex has the ability to terrestrialize into the ground typing. So you have to wonder if Rajan is trying to force an early terrestrialization out from Nick's Calyrex and potentially going for a uh, opportunity to reset and reposition. I think so, but interestingly enough, Ooh. we see Rajan go for that turn one switch once again, and in game one, that was Talonflame, but this time it's that Iron Hands making an appearance. Yeah, Iron Hands now back out on the field, getting the attack boost from the Quark Drive, and it looks like there is going to be a Terrastalization turn one. 
That is the that is the Ursaluna going straight for the normal typing. Very strong play to be able to boost the power of Hyper Voice or Blood Moon and remove a Glacial Lance weakness. Amoongus's Rage Powder will redirect a Blood Moon if that is the choice. Will not be able to redirect a Hyper Voice though, so that Rage Powder did not do much of anything. And Nick held strong and did not get forced into a Terrasilization round turn one. Amoongus now eating up the Citrus Berry, taking again a little bit over 50% health as the Glacial Lance does significant damage to both Ursaluna and Iron Hands, but that is a three hit KO on both of those Pokemon. I love this adjustment from Rajan because that Ursaluna being able to ignore the threat of the Rage Powder and then also get the attack boost from the Terrastalization from the Silk Scarf as well is so important. I mean, that would have been a two hit knockout on that Amoongus if it wasn't for the Citrus Berry. And that Calyrex Ice Rider as well took significant damage. You have to play it a little bit slower, but now you're forcing your opponent to potentially double protect this turn. And then they have to take another attack from this Ursaluna Blood Moon if they want to set up Trick Room in the following turn. I would assume a Blood Moon plus a Heavy Slam would be enough to sort of change the tide. It potentially so. There's the fake out from the Iron Hands to into the Calyrex as Ursaluna fires off in Hyper Voice as well into both of the Protects. So. Nick did have to blow both protects on this turn, so there is very little option to protect these Pokemon. The only way to protect Calyrex right now would be through redirection on that Amoongus. Uh, we don't. We know that Amoongus will survive a Hyper Voice, but definitely won't survive a Blood Moon from this spot. Yeah, and I think the tough part about being an Ursaluna player is whether or not you go for a Hyper Voice <laughs> or the Blood Moon, as Blood Moon can only be used every other turn. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times when playing against an Ursaluna Blood Moon, many trainers will just try and you know protect every other turn to try and avoid the Blood Moon. Mm -hmm. But Rajon very smartly sticking with Hyper Voice up until this Ooh, point, okay. so he could threaten additional damage. Well, here is the Trick Room counter here, as Farigarath is the final Pokemon revealed for Rajan. There is the Electric Seed boosting the defense of the Farigarath, so it will be able to pretty easily tank a Glacial Lance coming out from Nyx Calyrex. It's another Hyper Voice, so Rajan is not falling for it, going to, going to take big damage for both of those Pokemon with that Hyper Voice, taking it back again with another Glacial Lance, but as you see, the Farigarath tanked it pretty easily, and the Ursaluna is the fastest thing on the field and totally capable of picking up both of these KOs this turn. Totally capable, which is a great position for Rajahan. I think really capitalizing on how Nicholas had that slower start in game one with all those Glacial Lances. Probably wanted to save that Giraffe or Frigarath, assuming that Trick Room went up that turn. Because it didn't happen, I think switching into the Iron Hands just keeps up the offensive pressure as we move forward with this game. It's just really unfortunate he lost the Electric Seed boost in order to make that play. Yeah, but you're okay trading that out because you likely are no longer going to have any kind of threat of Trick Room. And this Calyrex, it, without Trick Room going up, will not be able to move before being knocked out just by a hyper voice here. There's a KO for the Ursaluna onto the Amoongus and great switch in for that Iron Hand being able to threaten fake out pressure so that even if Nick did decide to bring in a Pokemon like that Choice Scarf Urshifu, Rajan's got the counter ready for it. Yeah, and now Nicholas is in such a tough spot. Yes, you have your Incineroar on the field and that Intimidate will help mitigate the Quark Drive attack boost on the Iron Hands. You may have the faster fake out in this situation, but you're only, you know, delaying the inevitable. Like you can stop the Ursaluna this turn, but I don't think a fake out would do enough damage to pick up the KO there. You have to opt for an attack into that spot to try and find an opportunity for your Calyrex Ice Rider. But even then, you're still gonna struggle with the poke Pokemon that Rajan has in the back. All right, well, that's actually the Farigarath to block any fake outs coming out from the Incineroar. Nick is forced to go for a double protect on the Calyrex, but it does not work out at all. And there is the close combat. A little bit of uh, extra gravy on top for that one, but covering for any potential switch ins from that Urshifu in the back, trying to get as much damage as possible should that happen. It is going to be a parting shot coming out from the Incineroar, so no damage on Nick's side, instead getting just a special attack drop on to the Farigarath and opting to cycle the Intimidates. But this is the last option to cycle Intimidates, and that's just going to be on the Iron Hands, which can easily switch out. 
And this uh, Urshifu is not looking very strong. We know there is still a Dragon-type Maridon in the back. We do, and that Dragon-type Maridon not only will resist the attacks from this Urshifu, it'll be able to deal back super effective Electric-type <laughs> damage. So this is really the opposite of the position we saw in game number one for Nicholas, where you know he sort of had Rajon in that nice pin with the fake out with the Pokemon that could break through Protect. Now Rajon is the one that has forced this Urshifu out on the field, forced it to make a very tough decision of what attack it locks into for the rest of the game, mm -hmm. alongside of the incentive Roar, which doesn't necessarily have the damage output needed to match Iron Hand, to match Maridon, or even the <laughs> Ursaluna at this point in time. Rajan made a great adjustment going into game two with his play style, yeah. capitalizing on those early Glacial Lance turns, and now you get to see the payoff. Yeah, I don't know that <laughs> this that Nick has the, the damage to match for Rigoraf's output right now, you potentially, know? too. It's a surprisingly powerful Pokemon. <laughs> Here comes the Terrastalization from the Urshifu just to remove that fighting typing from that Pokemon so that it does not get knocked out by the Ferrigarath's Twin Beam. Instead, the Urshifu is switching in and also boosts the Surging Strike, so we'll be able to sacrifice the Ursaluna this time around. Rajan using that Pokemon to scout out what Urshifu is going to lock into and also be able to cycle Fake Out from that Iron Hand as Incineroar is forced to go for a knockout as the only real damaging option for uh, for that Pokemon, which actually showing that this uh, Perigraph is faster than the Incineroar is important information for a game three. There is the Twin Beam doing just a little bit of damage and the knockoff does okay damage, but the seed's already gone, so it's not that great. It's not that great, but it is enough for a knockout onto the Ferrigarath next turn, assuming we don't see the return of Iron Hands and a flinch to the Pokemon that targets that Pokemon. Mm -hmm. I like the defensive terrestrialization from Nicholas in that turn so that you are guaranteed to take a Twin Beam. But unfortunately, now you're just super weak to this Maridon. And yes, yeah. you can maybe attack before it because of your choice scarf and uh, you and can try it. Uh, <laughs> it's very, it's just going to be a tough matchup. Unlike in other matchups where Maridon wants to terrestrialize, I think against the, at least in this board state, I think Rajon made the absolute correct call of terrestrializing the Ursaluna Blood Moon instead mm -hmm. because in this end game, now this Maridon, again, resists almost all the damage that Nicholas has. Yeah, actually, like, you can, you can, use the Choice Scarf to knock out the Ferregarap, but that is all this Urshifu has available. Goes for these Surging Strikes, uh, may try to just hope that the damage is there for the Maridon, but you know, you're already criti getting critical hits on every strike of those Surging Strikes. There is not some secondary critical hit that this Urshifu has access to, and that means Maridon is entirely safe to just go ahead and fire off an attack, and this is Electro Drift. That's going to deal so much damage into Urshifu. You know, I remember looking at Maridon calculations for Electro Drift, and, <laughs> you know, it has the extra effect of being dealing even more damage when it's super effective, yep. and it's never relevant. Because if you're weak to the Electro Drift, you are just already losing to that Pokemon. Now, the Incineroar gets to knock off the choice specs as Ferrigarap actually goes for the Trick Room here, setting up a win condition for Iron Hands in the back. I like, though, that we saw Nicholas go for the Surging Strikes into the Maridon because that's some really good information for him in game number three. You know, twice now we've seen him save that Urshifu as one of the Pokemon in the back, and assuming that's his game plan for game number three, he now knows just how much chip damage needs to go down onto that Pokemon before Urshifu can safely terrestrialize in front of it and go for the KO. Very true. Here but is the Iron Hands to wrap this up for Rajan in a game two. Also has the Helping Hand from Ferrigarap to be able to boost the power of a Drain Punch or a Close Combat. So the final uh, Pokemon score looks a little closer than it was a couple turns ago, but looks like Rajan has this pretty well tied up for the end game. I will say seeing the Incineroar go for the Little Wisp onto the Iron Hands, I don't think that'll make a difference with the Helping Hand, but you know, we do know that it, it connects. That's important. And I think that it, there is a world where if you don't go for the helping hand there, you probably, well, well I guess with most combat, nah, you're yeah. probably fine. You're fine. Yeah, you're There's fine. A, that's a KO on turn one. 
Rajan is keeping the same two leads as in game two, but it's actually going to be the Raging Bolt and the Amoongus. So it's Maridon and Budget Maridon out on the field. So the nice thing, I guess, about this lead from Nicholas is that now you're almost forcing Rajan to terrestrialize that Maridon if you don't yeah. want it to be KO'd by a return Draco Meteor. Um, but on the other hand as well, I think that you're taking a huge risk here, especially with the Ursaluna on the field. Yeah, that Ursaluna does not have the Earth power that it once had, so it's not threatening super effective damage onto the Raging Bolt either. It will be the Iron Hands that was in the back switching in and getting that Quark Drive boost. But of course, Amoongus will just protect its partner Raging Bolt this time with a Rage Powder. And there is a Draco Meteor. That is enough to KO okay. the Amoongus in one, but will drop the special attack. So we have seen where Maridon have lost the momentum after that. But this time around, not going to worry about that. Just another Draco Meteor into the Iron Hands with the Assault Vest only dealing about 50% of the damage there. So Maridon is at minus two, but will be covered on its switch out by a fake out from the Iron Hands. Or, you know, this isn't an Assault Vest Raging Bolt. A minus two Draco Meteor with choice specs in the electric terrain, I think is still enough here. I think the Raging Bolt as well might be threatening some big damage on that Maridon with a return Draco Meteor. Mm -hmm. So even though both these Pokemon are at minus two special attack, I think there still is a lot of damage in play for both these Pokemon. Mm -hmm. And while I normally love to see Ice Rider Calyrex players, you know, use the Amoongus going down as an opportunity to send in the Ice Rider Calyrex in a favorable position, because Rajon was able to switch in his fake out user in that previous turn, this Calyrex Ice Rider is going to struggle and potentially take a lot of damage if it did not go for protect. Well, Nick is trying to reposition here. Calyrex will protect itself. The Draco Meteor into the protect means that no damage is coming out from the Maridon. Urshifu switches in, and actually it was a double up into the Calyrex. Nick threatening the Trick Room, Rajan respecting it, but this allows that Urshifu to come in for free. As we saw, it does not threaten that much damage onto a Maridon with Surging Strikes. Potentially with the Close Combat may threaten a little bit more, but definitely is threatening big damage onto that Iron Hands. And Iron Hands is the one that you want to threaten right now because Maridon at minus two special attack will not be able to knock out this Calyrex yeah. barring a critical hit. So if you want to go for that risk, you want to go for that Trick Room, you have to go for the Close Combat KO into Iron Hands and you just have to hope that the uh, Pokemon will be able to find that knockout, but we actually get the terrestrialization from the Iron Hands into the Grass type, but I don't know if that'll be enough. No, I mean, if, if Nick was going for the Surging Strikes, it may be, but that's a close combat into the Grass type, and that picks up the KO onto Iron Hands. So Rajan trying to go for a defensive terrestrialization instead gets no change in the damage and just loses the ability to terrestrialize any future Pokemon on his team. And this one Draco Meteor at minus two hits the Calyrex and not even 50% damage at minus two means that Calyrex gets a totally free Trick Room and the Pokemon that was most able to deal damage in Trick Room, the Iron Hands is off the field. Rajan has not revealed his final Pokemon yet, and if that Pokemon is Farigarath, there is a world where you send in the Farigarath, you try and go for Trick Room, you remove the Maridon from the field in favor of the Ursaluna, and you hope that Close Combat plus Glacial Lance will not be enough to KO that Farigarath after the Electric Seed defense boost. Yeah. But that is such a tall ask for Farigarath to try and find a way through. Yeah, I mean, that's that probably means sacrificing the Ursaluna yep. to try and keep the, uh, to bring the Maridon back in. Yep. And Nick has not terrestrialized yet. Yep. Nick still has the opportunity to become a ground Calyrex yep. instead of an ice type, and that would be devastating for Roger. Exactly. So even though there is a world where this Maridon comes back onto the field with the speed all the way back to normal and with those special attack drops dropped, mm -hmm. it will come at a huge cost. And I think you have to ask yourself, 
who is the more useful Pokemon right now? My Maridon or my Ursaluna Blood Moon? And unfortunately for Rajan, with Terrastalization off the table as well, I don't think there's no good, I don't think there's a good <laughs> yeah. answer to that question. Yeah, I don't know that either is better. Yeah. Uh, there's the possibility that Maridon coming back in if this Trick Room is able to be reset, uh, will be able to start picking up KOs with Draco Meteor. There is still the Raging Bolt in the back. Maybe, maybe you pick up KOs onto this Calyrex and then the Raging Bolt and then the Urshifu at then minus four. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you do have Helping Hand potentially, so uh, Nick is gonna, just going to go ahead and go for the Terrestrialization, become the ground type, connects with Farigarap and Ursaluna, and Ursaluna actually survives that uh, that Glacial Lance, while Farigarap does not try to reset Trick Room, instead picks up the KO on that Urshifu, which means that Urshifu has now gone down. But again, that's big damage on the Ursaluna on the switch end. It is, and while Ursaluna can protect this next turn to prevent a KO, Farigarap cannot protect. Mm -hmm. It will be slower than the Raging Bolt, most likely, so we could see Rajan try and land foul play into the opposing Calyrex Ice Rider, especially after, you know, it, it doesn't could, have any boosts yet. It doesn't have any boosts and it's already taken a little bit of damage. I'm honestly not sure that's enough at, the, at which point in time the combination of a follow up attack from that Raging Bolt should be enough to pick up the KO. Whoa. But again, we're seeing another switch here. It's very curious that Rajwan is finding his way through Trick Room by, by putting his main attackers on the line. Yeah, and they have no options here. Ursaluna is the only Pokemon remaining that can protect on Rajan's side of the field. So that is a protect from that Pokemon. will allow it to survive for one more turn, but there are three turns of Trick Room left. There's going to be two more after this, and Maridon on the switch and just gets one hit KO'd. And that is a big KO to take from the Calyrex. So, you do get that Chilling Nade boost to potentially boost a foul play, but you've lost your defense boost from the Electric Seed, and uh, with that boost, that looks like big damage. I was going to say, looks I like mean, big damage this, to is me. where, this is where your knowledge of uh, damage calculations has to come into play. That all the practice that you did coming into this oh, big tournament. Oh, this is close. Fergarap is at about 75% health, and I mean, it is known for its bulk, so it could be trained where it has a chance at surviving this attack. That's a two-stage swing, losing the defense boost and getting a plus one on the yep. chilling nay. Yep. Rigorath looks like it's just barely going to survive it, so Rajan needs a double protect from the Ursaluna to have yep. a shot here, as Raging Bolt will be able to pick up the remaining health on Rigorath, and that would be enough for that uh, to probably take it home without the uh, Earth Power on Ursaluna. Exactly. So here we go. We oh, do get the it. double protect. He got the double protect. Ursaluna hits the double protect. This damage is going to be so important. The Glacial Lance into the protect will connect with the Verigraph. No more seed boost, but plus one chilling nay on the on the oh. that survives. That has to be one or two hit points. There's the foul play. Oh. Not enough damage on the Calyrex. And there is Raging Bolt picking up that final hit point on the Farigarap. And it now is, this Ursaluna may be two more protects, one more protect. One more protect and a would critical do hit. it. Uh, one more protect, a critical hit into the Draco Raging Meteor Bolt. Dodges. Or oh. you try and go for the KO on a vacuum wave and then a Draco Meteor miss. I mean, talk about playing oh. to your outs. Nicholas Khan will win this round five of Swiss and be undefeated here in day one of the North American International Championships. And one of the closest 